this second meeting of the Global ART Forum. And once again, as I would always say, let's do it together in this world. And our moderator is, of course, the Dr. Ashok Agarwal, who is the head of Andrology Center at Cleveland Clinic Foundation, also the director of American Center of Reproductive Medicine. He's a highly celebrated andrologist who probably has the highest number of papers and research publications ever, which could be there. I would hand over the mic to Dr. Ashok Agarwal, please. Sir, the screen is yours, sir. Sir, you are muted. Good evening, everyone. Namaskar. Thank you very much, Sunil. Um, I am calling, uh, I'm joining you from America, from Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, it is uh, a wonderful morning here uh, with beautiful sun outside. So I'm uh, pleased to be part of this uh, wonderful program that has been planned. So let me explain what is uh, this global ART forum. So the mission of our uh, forum is it is a free, not-for-profit, a non-political platform that shares the latest knowledge, which is uh, really embedded in science and facts uh, with reproductive professionals and, and other medical professionals and people from other profession as well, empowering them to turn in turn to take good care of their patients. And our vision is uh, to have a collaborative live educational forum of medical experts for reproductive professionals that assist them on the path of continuous learning and clinical excellence. Next. So the why we are meeting today is uh, we have organized uh, a wonderful program and the focus of this program is welcome to a brand new world with COVID. And many of you will wonder, what does that mean? And I'm sure that our speakers uh, who are some of the best speakers uh, nationally in India, as well as uh, anywhere else in the world are going to tell what this means. So I'm not going to give you too much except to tell that this is not just uh, for medical professionals. I think the things that we are going to have our speakers tell are going to be so many, uh, so important for so many of us who are uh, trying to deal with the problem of this pandemic. And we chose the word welcome to the brand new world with COVID because we believe that uh, this uh, virus is going to be with us for a long time. It is not going anywhere. And we have to adapt as a human being, as professionals to live with this. And this is what we are going to have. Uh, next slide. We will have our very first speaker who is going to be, uh, may I have the next slide? We have uh, our next speaker, uh, Sunil, can you uh, move the slide to the next? Um, let me see if we can uh, move the slide. Well, while uh, we are waiting for uh, Dr. Sunil, probably, uh, uh, can you move to the next slide, uh, Sanjeev? So we, we can uh, introduce our next speaker. Just a second, please. I'm uploading. Uh... So, our next uh, speak, our first speaker uh, is uh, Dr. Varka Chulani. Dr. Varka is uh, a very renowned clinical psychologist and a psychotherapist at uh, the Leelawati Hospital in Bombay. This is one of the most famous uh, of the hospitals in India. She is in private practice for the last 20 years. She is a frequent guest 
uh, on radio, TV. Uh, she has been a speaker on TEDx and has numerous uh, honors and awards uh, and uh, accolades uh, for her work. And we have invited her uh, today to, to speak uh, on managing stress during COVID tips and tricks for medical professionals. So we ask uh, Dr. Varka to come over and uh, tell us how we can really deal with all the stress, all kinds of uncertainty, all kinds of uh, problems uh, uh, with the pandemic uh, that is going on and which is keeping us uh, awake uh, throughout the night and uh, creating so many difficulties for us and for our family and uh, and I think this is such an important issue and we are so fortunate to have Dr. Varka with us today. So I will ask Dr. Varka to come over and please uh, begin her presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Intas Pharmaceuticals, Mr. Sakwati, Mr. Solanki, for giving me the opportunity to be with you today. Thank you so much, Dr. Agarwal, for warmly and kindly introducing me. I feel motivated. To my illustrious uh, panelists and guests, uh, Tarun Gupta and Dr. Jindal, pleasure to be with you as well. And of course, to all my viewers who are viewing in. I am so happy that I'm being able to do this. Now, all of us in the previous few weeks have been caught pretty much unawares, not knowing really what this pandemic is about and how long it's going to last. So there's been a time which was what we could call pre-COVID or before COVID, as in BC, and after COVID, which is AC. What would the world be like after COVID? But before we get into the afterworld, what about us handling ourselves better during COVID? And it is with this that I thought a small presentation of sorts uh, should be in order because all of us are uncertain, anxious, distraught, distressed, not really knowing how to manage ourselves in these very difficult and trying times. I thought as a psychotherapist, what would I like to share? What would I like to teach? What would I like to educate my audience and myself for to be able to cope and manage with these trying times? So the first thing that I think all of us need to know is a short little story. It's extremely inspiring. And it may set the ball for me to explain how you and I can manage these difficult times during COVID. So let's hear it. Dr. Viktor Frankl was an Austrian neurologist and a psychiatrist. Unfortunately, during the war, he was captured by the Germans and put into a concentration camp in Auschwitz. From an identity of a neurologist and a psychiatrist, Suddenly, his identity changed to that of a prisoner. Not only of a prisoner, but of a prisoner with a number. 119, as he was known. In his seminal book, Man's Search for Meaning, he writes a biographical description of what he had to endure to be able to cope and come through surviving a very, very arduous, difficult, brutal, a uh, time where he was hungry, thirsty, and more importantly, always worried about when his turn would come to be exterminated. During the time of his concentration camp, or during the time in the concentration camp, his mother, his father, his brother, and his wife were all either taken to the gas chambers or died while waiting their turn to be exterminated. He and his sister survived. Interviewers asked how had he managed to cope with such a difficult and such an arduous challenge of surviving the concentration camp. And he put out a very famous quote saying he had no choice but the will to cope because he believes and I believe as well that every freedom can be taken away from us but the freedom to choose how to respond to situations is largely within our control. So circumstances can constrain us, COVID can happen to us, the pandemic can engulf us, 
but the last of human freedoms as he put it was the ability to choose what did he mean let me explain again he believed that the concentration camp was an event that actually happened to him and the choice that he made was the choice in the attitude of how to respond and how to react to those very difficult and trying circumstances so the first aspect of coping is to learn epictetus is great sentence which says events or circumstances in this world do not disturb us events or circumstances in this world do not disturb us it is our view of the circumstance that disturbs us please underscore the word view because that's exactly what dr frankel was able to do with himself he had the freedom to choose the view he gave to those very trying and difficult times in auschwitz where he spent a large part of his life today at the time of the pandemic and the covid you and me have no control about how long this is going to last whether life will ever be the same again those we call in our language external event or circumstances but as epictetus said events do not disturb us so it is not the pandemic or the covid which is the cause of your anxiety stress distress distraughtness or despair it is the view that you and me ascribe to it i know it sounds very well all of us sitting in our air conditioned rooms with our laptops open to say what she talking about so let me explain it again in the form of two simple examples here were two men both stuck during the lockdown during the pandemic both having to to face the state's lockdown and not be able to go out and do what they were usually able to do which is earn a living go out and make money take their careers ahead one of them responded with the covid in a very happy manner the other responded in a very relieved manner strangely both of them one being happy for covid the other being relieved that covid had actually happened so can you see that the same event a pandemic covid-19 occurring in both these people's lives yet both of them responding and reacting so differently one with happiness yes he actually felt happy about covid and the second with relief how come the same event got two different people to react so differently to the same event and this is where epictetus's statement of what is the view each one took of it what is the meaning one attributed to the covid which made him feel happy and what is the view that the other attributed to the same pandemic which made him feel relieved listen to the views so man one said oh actually you know i'm 50 years old i was hoping to retire but i was very worried what would people think of me if i retired at such a young age now that the pandemic has come it gives me a great opportunity to retire when i want to at young age of 50 i won't be looked upon as weird and odd and awkward so i love the pandemic because it gives me an opportunity to do what i want which is retire with this meaning that he attributed to the pandemic he was quite thrilled to bits that the pandemic had happened now look at the second map the pandemic was the same so events do not disturb us yeah. the pandemic was the same for the second man as well his meaning was very different from the first he said my god thank god for the pandemic it is actually the time which will allow me to shut my business without me losing face in the past my business has been going down the drain but i don't have the courage to tell people and showcase the fact that i've been a failed businessman now with the pandemic in front of me i can use the pandemic as an excuse as to why i had to shut shop can you see the meaning he attributed to covid-19 was it gives me an opportunity to save face and shut shop and with that meaning he felt relief so two people with the same event the pandemic feel two different emotions one is happy and one is relieved did the pandemic change no 
the pandemic was constant. What changed? The change was the meaning. Each of them attributed differently to the same event. And the meaning that was attributed by man one was, wow, gives me an opportunity to retire. I had never had the courage to retire at age 50, thinking people will say, what a weird man, how can you retire so young? But this pandemic has given me an opportunity to do something which I didn't have the courage to do otherwise. And he generated happiness. The other man felt that the pandemic gave him an opportunity to save face. No one likes to feel like a loser, least of all to be exposed that we've been poor in business. And the pandemic, when he interpreted it as an opportunity to save face so that he could save his business and not save his business, rather close his business and not showcase to others that he was a failed businessman, he felt relief. What does that teach us? It teaches us what Shakespeare, the great writer said, nothing is good or bad. Thinking makes it so. It is what you and I will make of events, situations, the COVID, the pandemic, the lockdown, which will determine how you and I will respond and react to it. The point of choice, as Dr. Frankel said, was not in events. He couldn't escape the concentration camp, he couldn't escape from the years of torture that he was subjected to. But he chose the attitude to deal with the Auschwitz concentration camp. And you and I, if we attribute the right meanings, we interpret, evaluate, judge, and give correct meanings to this pandemic, you and me will not then feel distressed distraught, stressed, anxious, depressed, and what have you. Because the power of choice is in the attitudes that you and me will subscribe to this event. So we can make good things happen out of very bad things. Please change this slide, doctor. We can make very good things happen out of very bad things. Or as Shakespeare said, nothing is good or bad. Thinking makes it so. Next slide, please. I make my emotional destiny and so do you. The emotional destiny is determined by the attitudes, the definitions, the outlook, the points of view, the ideologies or the philosophies that you and me will ascribe to this not so nice situation. Please change the slide. So what happens to us, you and I can, can't control. But how we respond to that happening will determine whether we can make good things happen out of these very trying circumstances or we pull ourselves down and completely dissipate. Next slide, please. So the operative word to know is that whether we will become victors of our circumstances or whether we will become victims of our circumstances. Victory comes to those who take charge in the outlook that they ascribe to the events, to the, to the circumstances that you and I are cornered with. Victors are able to make the right definitions, have the right attitudes and the right perspectives. Victims are people who have an unfortunate tendency to have very poor philosophies, ideologies and outlook towards this very distressing situation. So I don't take away from the situation. The situation is unfortunate. It's not nice, but it will deter be determined by the outlook and the attitude that you and I have towards the situation, which will either help us cope or it will pull us down into self-pity, despair and distraughtness. What are the four attitudes I believe all of us could benefit from so that we are able to make good things happen? out of these very bad things. Number one, accept reality. Next slide. Accept reality. What do I mean? Next slide again. Acceptance of reality is the first step towards coping. All people who succeed in life are people who accept unfortunate truths. I know these are very harsh truths. These are times when you and me are sitting at home 
rather than being in our respective clinics. We are not earning any money. Our offices are closed. Our hospitals are not running. We are in a way being compelled to sit back and wait till the government and the state decides what it wants to do and how soon it wants to open. And even then, life has changed and possibly changed forever. But the more you accept, the better you will become a problem solver. Why do I say that? A lot of us waste emotional energy fighting truths. The truth is for better or for worse, you and me are stuck, stuck at home, having to accept the unfortunate reality that our businesses may suffer, our hospitals may suffer, our careers may suffer. But acceptance does not mean resignation. Next, next slide, please. Acceptance does not mean resignation. And that brings me to the serenity prayer. It's a beautiful prayer. And I think if we can say this every morning, you and I will have the courage to cope. What does the prayer say? It says, God grant me the courage, uh, the courage. God grant me the courage to accept the things which I cannot change. The courage to change the things which I can, but also the wisdom to know the difference. And if you and me accept reality, you and me will become problem solvers, not problem compounders. The mind needs to free itself because I do believe that all human beings have basic intelligence and the experience of their past to be problem solvers. But the more I fight reality, the more I resist it, the more I fight against it, my mind begins to compound problems. It doesn't begin to simplify and look at solutions for problems. So anxiety, guilt, depression, anger, self-pity are emotions which block our intelligence and our ability to cope and find the solutions that you and I will require. So the serenity prayer says, have the courage to change the things which you can. You can change things. What is that? The attitudes that you will take towards the unfortunate reality that happens to us. So the first skill in managing these very difficult times is accepting and coping rather than condemning and moping. The more you and I accept the unfortunate truth, the more empowered we will be the more empowered we will be to go out and find the solution to these very difficult days which are going to lie ahead of us when businesses reopen, hospitals reopen, and we get back into the real world. Point number two, do what you can with where you are and with what you have. I repeat, do what you can with where you are and what you have. Slide two, please. A lot of us usually don't ask ourselves, what can we do? The very fact that today you're watching me and are tuning in to this webinar itself shows one thing, that you are well and you are alive, that you can listen, you can speak, you can think. The very fact that you have an ability to do that itself is something to be grateful for. Over and above that, there are skill sets that you and me already possess. We need to now reinvent ourselves with where we are. We are at home. We have so much time on our hands. We have the opportunity to use the internet to either upgrade our skills, to reskill, or to learn something completely which we've never touched before. Because the only thing within your control, again, is to do what you can with where you are. For better or for worse, you and me are stuck in our respective homes. Thankfully, we have the electricity and we have the gadgetry to be able to log on to any part of the world. And we can, if we choose to make the most of this opportunity, if we go by the second step, which is asking what can we do with where we are and with what we have. What do we have? We have our intelligence. We have our resources. Let's look at it as an ability to capitalize on what is available to us. Because, as I repeat, it is better to accept and cope than condemn and mope. And it is better to do than to stoop. So go back to accepting reality and asking, 
what can I do with where I am and with what I have? Point three, direct the mind. The mind is a very funny creature. If you don't direct it, it directs you. Many people in these times have reached out to me saying, Barkha, we try very hard to control our mind. And that is the biggest error that we make. We can't control and set. We can't rein it in. We have to direct the mind away from anxiety. The only time we can control our mind and ask it to stop is when we are actually dead. That time there's no question of control because the mind stops. Otherwise, 24-7, the mind constantly works. It constantly chatters to itself. It constantly visualizes things. It constantly takes us in a direction. And if we don't give it its direction, it's going to literally take us for a merry-go-round mm -hmm. all over the place. So direct the mind. Just change the uh, slide, please. Directing of mind comes when there is the purpose. So Dr. Viktor Frankl, who I spoke about in the beginning of my story, was asked, how come you were able to concentrate and manage to survive these difficult times? He smiled and he said, if you have a why to live, W-H-Y, you can bear any how. After a hard day's 12, 14 hours of struggle in the concentration camp, Camps where all of the prisoners were asked to carry stones and build things where the army and the other people were supervising them, they got some rest. Those were the times, he said, when he looked for small little bits of paper flying around the camp. Then he looked for pebbles because he said he had the purpose that he wanted to come out of this camp surviving so that he could write a book on a system of therapy called logotherapy. His belief was that if you can direct your mind with mm -hmm. a purpose, your life will be a much more fulfilling and a much more able one. He said the ability to visualize his book out there, which would save millions of people, preventing them from committing suicide, by them learning the art of logotherapy, which is nothing but purposeful mm -hmm. living, and giving a meaning to him. That's why his seminal book is called Man's Search for Meaning. He believed that the minute you direct your mind towards a purpose, towards a cause, you will never have a need to feel despairing, distraught and distressed. The same thing goes for us today. You and me need to sit back and ask, what is the purpose that you and I have for our lives? Again, there's a science here. When the mind is being directed, it is going towards a singular thought. Mind cannot think simultaneously. The thoughts come one after the other. So when I think about what am I going to prepare to talk on this webinar today? What are the questions and answers that I'm going to be asked to answer? My entire focus of the mind is towards achieving something, towards giving my day a meaning, a purpose. So if you and I can structure every day by directing our mind towards a purposeful routine, you will find that you and I will be able to cope not only with this lockdown, but with all the changes that are going to come to us in the days that lie ahead. So besides accepting reality, asking yourself, what is it that I can do with where I am and with what I have? Direct the mind and give it a purpose because a purposeful life is a fulfilling life point number four ask if you are ready to struggle yes prepare to struggle what has happened in the last few years or actually in the last few decades unfortunately and i say the word unfortunately all of us have muddled along we have hedonically adapted in our personal lives, in our professional lives, and in our interpersonal lives. Life has just passed us by and we've gone along the flow of the river. We haven't developed the resilience, the tenacity, and what is my hashtag, the emotional muscle, to build emotional stamina and the determination and the resilience to cope. As a result of which, our coping skills, 
our ability to tolerate discomfort, our ability to bear difficulties has unfortunately gone down tremendously. If you are ready to struggle, this phase will not be that difficult to endure. So you would have seen a lot of people who go to the gym. They do muscle training, physical training. They keep lifting weights. And as they keep going along their training, they keep lifting more and more weights to build physical muscle. This is the time that you and I need to build emotional the emotional muscle to endure, the tenacity to cope, the resilience to face life because it has been disrupted forever. I'm sure many of you would see a rubber ball or I'm sure many of you would have flown in planes. And I don't think you've ever asked this question. How come when the plane lands, it lands on only three wheels up to 170 miles per hour with such a heavy load of passengers and cargo on it. The tires never burst. You know why? Because the tires have been inflated to a degree of pressure, which is much more, and that allows the tires to withstand both the speed of the landing and the load of the plane. Likewise, have you ever dropped a rubber ball and seen that it has the ability to bounce back? Both of them, that is the rubber ball, bounces because of the resilience encapsulated in the rubber. And the tires of the airplane don't bust when the plane lands because of the excessive pressure that has been purposefully into the tires so that you and I can have a safe and a comfortable landing. Pressure is good. Unfortunately, you and have always run away from pressure. But if, if you really want to cope in these pandemic COVID-19 times, you will have to start applying pressure all over again. Like you go to the gym to keep lifting weights of higher and higher intensity, start giving your mind a higher and higher intensity to be able to develop the tenacity, the resilience, and the coping mechanisms that it is now inevitably going to require to be able to cope with these very, very tough times. Because what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. And if you can have that as the philosophy of your life, that what doesn't kill me is only going to make me stronger, you will come out of this pandemic more innovative, more creative, and definitely much fulfilled. So just to recap, we can make our emotional destiny. The choice is in the attitude, in the interpretation, in the evaluation, in the judgment you and I will give to these very trying and difficult circumstances of the lockdown and the pandemic of COVID-19. It is the meaning you and me will ascribe, which will either allow us to be victors of our circumstances or victims of our circumstances. We can either become the captive of our minds, or we can become the captain of our minds. The ideologies and the philosophies that you and me will subscribe to is going to determine whether you're going to be distraught and despairing, or you're going to be resilient and accomplishing. The choice is ultimately going to depend on how you and me define these circumstances. Because as Epictetus said, Situations in this world do not disturb us. It is our view of the situation that disturbs us. And Shakespeare put it even better. He says, nothing is good or bad. Thinking makes it so. I make, what do I make? I make my emotional destiny. How do I make my emotional destiny? By accepting reality. I don't accept that reality or acceptance of reality means resigning myself to fate. I have the courage to change what I can. I subscribe to the serenity prayer which says, accept the things which you cannot, cannot change, have the courage to change those which you can, but also the wisdom to know the difference. So do not fight reality. The more you embrace it, the more you free your mind to be an innovative, creative creature. Then ask, what can you do? with where you are and with what you have. 
Thank Dr. Vanta, you. you need to finish now. I'm finishing in two minutes, sir. So what can I do? I can I can innovate, create, and skill up. And the third thing is prepare to struggle where I'm willing to be like the tires of an airplane and be willing to take on the resilience and the tenacity or rather develop the resilience and the tenacity that the plane and the bouncing ball have. So to end this, I have a very lovely poem which I usually read whenever I have to motivate and you know make myself feel better. Let me try and say it to you. If you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win, but think you can't, it is almost certain you won't. If you think you lose, you're lost. For out in this world, we find success begins with a fellow's will. It's all in the state of the mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. Because before you know it, you can only win a prize. For life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man. But sooner or later, the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Varka. Thank you very much. Uh, it was uh, a wonderful, motivating, uh, and highly uh, interesting uh, uh, lecture, which included so many advices for so many of us. Uh, uh, it is uh, just uh, something that uh, uh, will be greatly useful for many of our uh, uh, delegates who are listening. And I, I know more than 1,200 of uh, people have uh, signed in, uh, maybe more now. Uh, that was uh, Slightly Slightly number in the beginning. So I will, uh, uh, I want to thank uh, Varka again. And I know she will be coming back uh, after uh, when we have the question and answer. But at this time, before I introduce our next speaker, I want to lighten the mood a little bit and uh, ask our uh, uh, in-house uh, Kaval, uh, uh, Dr. Sunil Jindal, to perhaps uh, say a beautiful shairi because he is uh, really a gifted man. And uh, I just want him to uh, uh, take uh, a moment to kind of uh, entertain us with uh, uh, a nice shairi before we introduce our second speaker. Sunil. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, after the fantastic lecture of Dr. Varka, I was just thinking ki I belong to a city where a kawal hua karte the, ek shair hua karte the, Bashir Badr Sahib. So he wrote about 30 years back something beautiful, which even today is amazing. And he said, Yu hi be sabab na raha karo, koi sham ghar pe raha karo. वो गजल की सच्ची किताब है वो गजल की सच्ची किताब है उसे चुप के चुप के पढ़ा करो कोई हाथ भी ना मिलाएगा जो गले मिलोगे तपाक से ये नए मिजाज का शहर है जरा फासले से मिला करो और और सर बड़ी खूबसूरत बात है मैंने एक जगह ये वीडियो पे बोला somebody connected me to Bashir Badr Sahab he is 93 in Bhopal and he listened to it and sent me a photograph of this of his smiling and I loved it this was magic for me thank you thank you very much Sunil that was lovely and I think such a great thing to have actually listen and get the feedback from uh, the real person who uh, said these words uh, 50 years ago. So that is uh, just amazing. So I'm, uh, uh, thank you very much and greatly appreciate your uh, um, light uh, moment here. Uh, let's take up uh, and introduce our uh, uh, next uh, uh, brilliant speaker, uh, Mr. Tarun Gupta. Uh, and you see his uh, introduction here on the slide. Uh, but I want to tell that uh, Tarun is uh, a executive president in one of the most uh, uh, important uh, daily newspaper in India called Dhanik Jagran. It is uh, the biggest uh, distinction is that this is the largest red newspaper in the entire world. And this is uh, no simple thing. 
Uh, he has over 20 years of working experience in this uh, news media. And uh, he comes from a family uh, which has been operating and owning this media business for over uh, uh, almost close to uh, 100 years or 88 decades. He is involved in content planning. He is involved in newspaper uh, opinion and ed editorial and expressing opinion on a variety of things. Uh, and uh, he is truly what we call as an intellectual or what we call in Hindi as buddhijivi. So I believe uh, that next slide, please. Uh, uh, we are looking forward uh, uh, from uh, Tarun uh, to speak uh, and give his personal thoughts uh, and uh, um, opinions about the anticipated response of uh, the state, which is uh, the government of India uh, after the lockdown is lifted. So what kind of... Uh, changes, what kind of scenario will occur, uh, because these are things uh, which are outside of the scope of uh, many of us who are in the medical profession. So to hear from somebody who is intimately involved in uh, uh, looking at uh, and has the uh, pulse of India on his fingertip, he should be able to look through and, uh, and uh, based on his experiences, can uh, try to enlighten us about this uh, new era, which is going to be in front of us very soon. So Tarun, uh, please take over now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I, uh, am I audible? Yes. yes. Perfect. Absolutely. OK. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you, Dr. Agrawal, for your kind words, uh, perhaps most undeserving. Uh, I hope I'm able to live up to these epithets. Uh, thank you, um, Dr. Varkha, for an invigorating um, um, address. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sunil. Uh, thank you um, uh, to all the organizers as well, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if I were to tell you that in this COVID-19 era, um, what we are experiencing is unprecedented. It is not something that our generation, but perhaps so many previous generations would not have experienced. Uh, I don't think I'll be adding any value now. That's it's it's cliched now to say that this is unprecedented, never experienced, and actually it requires no clairvoyance to say that the world will change in unimaginable ways. Now I'm not a technical person. I shall refrain from using words such as uh, disruption or you know. Uh, I do not know how it will be. I I don't think anybody has the uh, precise answer. But we are certain that the world will change in ways which we today are grappling to even fathom. Uh, response of the state. Now, obviously, in a free, liberal uh, uh, democracy that we are, we expect a limited role of the state that is represented by the government. Uh, we view the government as a facilitator, as a regulator as a protector of life and property, and that's about it. Uh, that's the theory of it. Practically, we know that uh, governments in our parts of the world are always in the forefront. They are very central, and uh, they influence the future course of action for uh, all the citizens. It, it's no different over here, so I'm not... Um, you know, I'm not discounting the relevance that the government will uh, bring in. Uh, also, in emergency times, uh, the governments tend to assume inordinate powers, which normally in peace times would be termed as undemocratic. But then it's only natural and that's inevitable. And also, uh, in these times, uh, we, uh, we really have no choice but to repose faith in the government and to respect and adhere to uh, their decision and their judgment. But does that also mean that we shouldn't question? Now, we, we would like to believe that lockdown had its utility. Lockdown has, uh, it had several benefits. Uh, it flattened the curve. It did not overwhelm our health infrastructure. We were able to prepare better. So 
now that, that takes me to a very simple uh, flying kite analogy if uh, people who are familiar with flying a kite uh, if they understand the concept of flying a kite it is said that you have to release let go and pull back so you know only then does the kite stay afloat in the air you let go and then you also pull back uh, the learning is that you don't keep doing the same thing even if it's successful it has to be a combination of letting go and pulling back uh, lockdown has served its utility going forward now are we in a situation that the treatment may be worse than the disease i do not know but these are questions that we need to ask and we would like these questions addressed from of course the government now if i were to kind of break it up into the short term immediate response in the aftermath from the government uh, well the starting point for me would be that we need clear communication we need uh, clarity in this chaos we, we are all bewildered we are addled we are boggled we do not know the businesses are disrupted there is an absolute um, i don't think any other country has seen such a strict lockdown so in order to restore some semblance of normalcy in order to now save uh, livelihoods so as to save lives we need the wheels of the economy to move and the starting point for it would be that perhaps we need to open up in a phased manner Uh, we uh, the government is best position to decide what to open how to open when to open which sectors to open which areas to open uh, what are the red zones orange zones green zones what are the containment zones how much movement should be allowed what we as citizens we need transparency we need clear protocols we need to know that that really should be the starting point now for example in the last one week when there was some mention of opening first the essential um, uh, services and commodities and then the critical supplier to those services and commodities and then some more um, at first uh, it was said that uh, industrialists will have to provision for all workers to stay in house so if you open up a factory all the workers that work there will have to be put up in the factory premises then it was said that if a single positive covid 19 case was found at least that was reported all that world. so was found then the, uh, there might be an fir lodged against the factory owner subsequently government did clarify that you know it's been misconstrued and we uh, uh, we did not intend for this so uh, fair enough but Uh, there was this uh, this confusion for quite a while which did not inspire confidence uh, now we still don't have clarity about the remuneration that the businessman is required to pay for the lockdown period it has been again been reported that whether under the aegis of the uh, indian epidemic act uh, the antiquated indian epidemic act dating to 1890 uh, 1897 or the disaster management act which has been invoked under under the provisions of either of these uh, legislations or any other statute uh, an industrialist or a private businessman cannot be forced to pay remuneration for the lockdown period you have example of the first world or several countries wherein government is offering subsidy again i am not saying uh, i we realize that the indian government may not have the financial wherewithal to come up with as large a fiscal stimulus as as america or any other uh, you know uh, 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 first world country but what we need is really clarity that there is a lot of controversy around this force measure clause which you have in lease agreements wherein uh, due to unforeseeable circumstances uh, the uh, uh, the tenant uh, may wriggle out of paying the lease rent now whether circumstances warrant this to uh, be uh, appropriate for uh, invoking the force measure clause or it's a fig leaf that is being pulled by uh, the tenants we do not know and we expect a lot of litigation 
around it subsequently when things open up now in a country with an overburdened judiciary i would expect the state to come up with some kind of an ordinance or you know some judicial clarity so that uh, people at least uh, uh, do not or at least unavoidable litigation can be um, you know uh, abandoned so this is uh, in the absence of clarity what uh, what what happens is that there is there is anxiety and that really adds to our woes now what we know about the business community the entrepreneur uh, segment the investor uh, segment across the globe that what they despise what they abhor is is unpredictability uncertainty is being unsure you know we just i, I think what the government so actually i am veering more towards uh, not the anticipated response but perhaps uh, uh, indulging in a lot of uh, wishful thinking that this is perhaps what i would expect from the government that please clarify please lay down the protocols please firm up the regulations and put them out in the public domain so that there is no speculation there is no conjecture there is your, your the anxieties are allayed people may may be in agreement they may be discordant but at least they are not left confused so that's that's really in in the short term and that's the immediate kind of response that uh, i i think we we should all and I, and i also you know i expect this and i also anticipate this from the government now in the medium to long term again when we are pushed to the wall when we are in a crisis and you know again as they say there are these aphorisms which say that in every tragedy there is an opportunity and you know you need to actually uh, sense that opportunity and harness that so uh, last time when india actually um, uh, uh, witnessed the most structural big bang reform was in 1991 and those were crisis times as well and often economists have alleged that since then it's almost been 30 years 29 years now uh, as we speak uh, governments of different views have only kind of tinkered in the margins as far as uh, the economy is concerned they've adopted this incremental uh, incrementalist approach there have been aberrations and i'm not an economist but that's been a perception with uh, some people in the um, uh, economic uh, intelligentsia now is this the time for those structural reforms that we are talking about and i'll come to uh, 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 come to what i mean by uh, the term structural reform also i think um, uh, we've read reports that the international community there is this kind of furor against china now it said that uh, china was the place of origin for sars uh, it's the place of origin of uh, this covid 19 as well now whether it's misfortune and you know there are several sinister conspiracy theories going around and uh, for want of corroborative evidence they are best best left um ignored at this point in time but there is no denying that most certainly china has uh, demonstrated some stealth uh, they've been surreptitious they haven't really um, they, at least they did not timely share with the world um, uh, the right information and what possibly could have been uh, a more localized kind of disease it uh, uh, it uh, uh, catapulted into um, an unmitigated kind of pandemic that we are uh, grappling with so doctors and scientists and medical experts are better positioned to uh, uh, either confirm or reject this view uh, but it's being touted at least in the um, uh, in in various circles that perhaps uh world may seriously ponder loosening china's grip on on global supply chains now does india have the potential to supplant can we fill in that void now these are notions we have romanticized for decades uh but now please blend blend it with some pragmatism will emotional back uh, uh, emotional outburst or emotional backlash alone uh see us replace china 
we realize that you know now now coming back to the point from where i started in the medium to long term what perhaps we would like the government to focus on will be structural reforms the land reforms the labor reforms we realize how difficult it is still despite the new land acquisition bill to acquire land for business purposes in this country we know that uh, uh, we are looking at reforming our labor laws and uh, we are uh, trying to codify them into four different codes but are we going to just change the nomenclature because the the text is still not out the substance we are still not aware of of the new labor law that will perhaps be tabled but is it going to be productivity linked will private business have uh, the leeway to kind of uh, uh, um, pay wages according to productivity to be able to engage uh, to uh, to loosely say have that hire and fire policy wherein uh, wherein if there is an uh, there is a, a requirement i am happy to engage more people if i am speaking on behalf of uh, a businessman but uh, you know once uh, the purpose is served uh, i should have the liberty to lay off as well uh, please excuse me may we pause that so uh, allow me the leeway to um, lay off as well so we need land reforms we need labor reforms we need capital reforms we need taxation reforms uh, we need uh, uh, we need to focus on our infrastructure uh we and and of course judicial reform i think in this country will lie at the heart of any economic or social progress so these are really the structural big bang reforms that we need to bring about and we need to focus on in the medium to long term now we are a country of 1.3 billion uh, and counting we are not a small scandinavian country we are not a singapore where service sector alone will gainfully engage uh, such a uh, such a large population we need to build our manufacturing capacity also in our country now 60% of the population so i am looking at maybe about uh, uh, 800 million people are directly or indirectly dependent on agriculture nowhere in the world can agriculture support these many people 80 crore log 80 crores 800 million people cannot be dependent on agriculture and that is why every 6 months there is a demand for farm loan waiver minimum support price subsidies so we really need to wean people of agriculture reduce the burden on agriculture and divert them to be absorbed in the manufacturing sector now this largest youth population in the world these 1.3 billion numbers and counting whether it is going to this population will be a curse or a demographic dividend that will boil down to how we are able to utilize them that takes me to um, my last point where i say the long term vision now no country can possibly bring about a transformational change without investing in its human resource uh, if we really want to make that transition from third world to first world from a developing to a developed country uh, if we really need, uh, intend to score on parameters of human development index on um, you know uh, environment uh, uh, parameters we actually will have to invest in our human resource and invest in human resource takes me to the point of education and health uh, perhaps in this uh, covid 19 times we would have realized that uh, we need to invest more in education invest more in public health uh, now i am reminded of this uh, um i'm saying i think at it was attributed it's attributed to swami vivekanand when he said that it's a sin to be sick if you see a society that is sick where where there is illness where there is poverty where there is filth it's reflective of the quality of education that society has received so 
we really need to educate our people and there is that distinction between educating our society and churning out literates because education has to do with morality as well with moral values as well and when i speak of education i am not referring to reservation in higher education that uh, 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 you know remains um, a, a contentious issue i am talking about quality education at primary and school level up to intermediate level and we really need to upgrade that our public health of course and you are all doctors you know it better than me that are uh, on various parameters are per capita uh, requirement are per capita availability of uh, doctors medical professional paramedics hospital beds ventilators icus we are woefully short of uh, international standards and we need to uh, really invest over there we we produce the best medical professional the best doctors uh, but possibly not the best medical care when i'm speaking of public health care uh, the third point of course will be sanitation now and now we're focusing on sanitizing our environment uh, now i have somehow never quite understood that uh, we we are still a 3 trillion dollar economy or almost a 3 trillion dollar economy intending to be a 5 trillion and then a 10 trillion dollar economy now when we see the the filth around is that ascribable to a lack of resource or a lack of will i am unsure so simple simple things like uh, waste disposal like um, you know our uh, overhauling our drainage system now those are things we really need to focus on in order to improve uh, the quality of our uh, uh, human life so that there is this uh, dignified existence for everybody now of course um, i i shall um, i i cannot deny that the world will change in ways which are unimaginable there will be more emphasis on online online education perhaps uh, those uh, i understand that at school level you know uh, you send a child to school for not just academics but for life skill as well so there is need for that physical education physical uh, uh, building of the school but there will be several uh, uh, diplomas degrees programs at higher education level where online might be a good substitute rather than study from a third rate university uh, uh, i would rather do a first rate course from a top university and there will be no physical constraint now with online uh, uh, penetrating uh, online work might this work from home might be uh, an idea whose time has come all it's not that technology did not permit us earlier on but perhaps uh, they were distrusting employers that if an employee is working from home whether he is actually working now technology will permit you to kind of uh, value or evaluate the output uh, without his physical presence he can work from home and still kind of deliver there are anyways now research is suggesting that uh, productivity only augmented now uh, when i say online education there might even be online evaluation there might even be online exams uh, often we've uh, Uh, we've uh, uh, lamented that our education system in india is more a test of memory that you know it involves rote learning and a regurgitation in an examination hall it's less uh, application oriented it does not really test your understanding as thoroughly as comprehensively now when you shift to an online evaluation uh, perhaps the pedagogic methods that we've deployed over the years the evaluation methods that we've deployed may also uh, um, kind of see some change and may also um, emulate the best practices elsewhere in the world uh, these are uh, well this uh, these are uh, uh, you know disappointing uh, times these are gloomy times um, well these are most certainly um, anxious times i am an incorrigible optimist so i was you know uh, when i was thinking of what to say today uh, when i am in the company of such erudite intellectuals and uh, well we are too far removed from the word uh, intellect and intellectual that is 
restricted to professionals like all of you. So um, I uh, stumbled upon uh, this factoid. Uh, it said that uh, there are more people alive today than have ever died. So, and I did Google on it. It's a fact. So uh, while it's a, you know, it's a cataclysm, it's an apocalypse, uh, you call it whatever, uh, the human species is not going extinct. It is not, uh, you know, it's not comparable with uh, the asteroid hitting the modern day Mexico when dinosaurs went extinct. I don't see any of it happening. So my only submission with all humility will be that, yes, the world will change. We will have, have to adapt. Be skeptical. Please do not be cynical. And I am personally very gung-ho and euphoric about India. And uh, like a schoolboy, I will recount. Um, look at, we have every kind of climate in our country, all kind of flora and fauna. We are a resource-rich country. Uh, we have uh, possibly the richest civilizational history. Our way of life is the oldest known to humanity. And then our people, we are tolerant, we are plural, we are resilient. This ingenuity, it's in our DNA. What can hold us back? We just need, uh, we just need inspirational leadership. We just need effective governance. And we need community integration. We really need community integration because as they say, years of origin dust cannot be cleared without or cannot be cleaned without community integration. I do not know if I have consumed more than my time, Dr. Agrawal, but that's really uh, as much that I have to say. Uh, thank you so much. I'll be happy to take uh, whatever questions there are. Thank you very much, uh, Tarun, uh, sir. I think uh, you did uh, such a wonderful job. Um, uh, we are all very impressed uh, with your thoughts and uh, um, and all the things that you have told us uh, and leaving us on such a positive note, um, I think is very inspirational. It's very uplifting uh, to look at all the capabilities of our civilization and uh, our, uh, our people. So um, thank you. And I think uh, we will come back uh, to all the speakers uh, towards the end. And, uh, and then uh, give the, uh, also the delegates the opportunity to ask question. And uh, let us move to our next and the last speaker of uh, this morning or this evening, sorry, I mean morning here in uh, USA. Uh, and this is uh, our distinguished uh, uh, speaker, Dr. Sunil Jindal. Uh, Sunil uh, does not need any uh, uh, introduction because of course, uh, if you look at the slide, uh, I think uh, there are so many uh, important distinctions uh, that uh, decorate his uh, uh, biography. He is uh, a surgeon by training and uh, he is uh, a andrologist or uh, a male infertility reproductive uh, medicine specialist uh, in uh, the hospital which his parents built who were both physicians and his wife Anshu, she is uh, a beautiful lady. She is an uh, OBGYN specialist and, uh, uh, and a dear friend. So Sunil is um, in a, uh, when I was talking to Sunil, may I have the next slide? I was um, uh, telling him we need uh, you to talk something uh, which is uh, different than uh, just uh, talking about uh, the routine things, uh, which we will have many opportunities to talk about uh, fertility and reproductive medicine, but go into uh, looking at uh, how things are going to change uh, from your viewpoint uh, as a specialist, as a physician, as a, as a father, as a uh, entrepreneur, as uh, having uh, been uh, in charge of such a large hospital, and meeting so many thousands of patients every uh, every year. What is your viewpoint? Of course, uh, um, this is what we are looking is, uh, and he uh, came up with this beautiful title, Staring at the Brave New World. 
so um, it is uh, a enigmatic uh, title something uh, which is uh, uh, you have to hear i think uh, uh, he will tell um, with uh, so many different uh, historical accounts uh, uh, many of the things that are happening at this time what are the similarities what are the differences and how we are going to change how the world is going to change or not change uh, according to sunil so this is uh, sunil's uh, uh, but also i think everybody else's viewpoint uh, looking at the future looking at the brave new world so i ask uh, dr sunil to take over and thank you very much sunil for your presentation uh, thank you very much sir in fact you stretch me so hard uh, i want to speak on a medical topic and you told me no that's not what we speak is spoken about you speak so many times it's got to be something different and something which concerns all of us and if you ask me staring at the brave new world is the story which all of us feel today and today were it not for this pandemic we would not have been together at this moment sitting for this webinar i was just told i think there are about 1700 people at the moment who are there as participants and this would only happen because i was just remembering ek sai saab ka purana sher who said something beautiful he said bimari ek kaam to tu acha kar deti hai yaaron ko kuch der aur ikhatta kar deti hai so it is amazing that i would feel that this is the way things have been happening but i'll tell you one story which is the truth it was 29th of may 1980 in world war 1 there was a ship which stopped and got to bombay harbor this was carrying soldiers of the british indian army who had come from world war 1 they landed at bombay port and spread throughout this country they were carrying the spanish flu with them the spanish flu spread all over the country at that time whatever food india used to produce was taken for the british army in world war 1 and all the doctors the british doctors were on the front so this country did not have food this country did not have doctors and do you know that out of the total number which was between 50 and 70 million people who died in the spanish flu 15 million died in this country but something which happened at that time was that indians beyond caste creed the religion in that death and misery got together to lift each other up and that was the time that spirit of india was born to rally behind mahatma gandhi the rally behind mahatma gandhi and somebody who actually thought at that time that we these british would never leave us we are not capable of fighting with the british superpower the empire these people because of that anger and that hard work got together joined together rallied behind mahatma gandhi do you know mahatma gandhi also had spanish flu and india became independent so the genesis of india if you ask me lies in that pandemic and if we go on further from there at this moment and look at this pandemic in india you would realize that the curve is flattening there is no spike there is a possibility that this curve may suppress and the mortality probably may not be the way it has happened in the western world in this country and if at all the curve becomes a w which means there is recurrence and regular recurrence of the virus still this country probably would be better than 
a lot of battered countries of the first world. And if this happens, this country is one of the most reliable countries to be in for this world. Like Mr. Tarun Gupta said, there's so many things which this country has, which no other country has. But there are so many ways in which this country behaves in which no other country behaves. So the beauty at the moment is that if this country gets together, the emotional and economic blash against China, which is expected, as we see with Japan, which is giving a major amount of thrust to its own industry by giving them a lot of money, then there are so many countries from which money can come to this country to build it up. We think about all these things, but also realize one small thing, that in 1918, because of the Spanish flu, not only India became independent, there was the end of the World War I, and there was a strong apartheid movement in South Africa. And this transformed the public health completely in the United Kingdom, which came up with the NHS in 1948. And one of the strongest medical systems in the world of Russia was built in 1920. And do you know, at that time, post-World War, they realized health was to be looked into. If you look in further, if you look in further, you would realize that the economic backlash against China would lead to a stage where a lot of business supply chains may move to India, contract manufacturing may move to India. There are big wealth funds with money which are awash with liquidity and liquidity will be attracted to India, but they have to be good companies. They have to be proper policies. And Mr. Tarun, just as you said, the structural reforms with an honest modern technology where there is fairness to the stakeholder will lead this country to be what we really envisage this country to be. Next. And this country, at this moment, I believe very strongly that this pandemic, like the 1980 Spanish flu was, this pandemic may be a new beginning for this country if this country takes it well. I just formulated in my mind a few concepts which I felt have changed. And I also thought about a lot of things which I'd like to share with you. See, the world has changed forever. The world before was pre-COVID. It is not going to be post-COVID. It is going to be with COVID. We are going to live with COVID. And this world has changed. It will never be the same. Nature has struck back. Till date, we always felt we are the masters of nature. What did we not do for nature? Whether it was deforestation, mass animal slaughter, rivers. We just didn't take care of anything. And now this nature, which actually is the master, which we used to worship long ago, is there to show us that is the master. Adaption would be the key. If you adapt quickly to the new changing world, this will be the world for you. Survival will not be of the fittest. Survival will be of the quickest. Do we know till now, I was just seeing the statistics, about 54 million jobs are lost in the United States of America alone. Every human being has to be quick to adapt, to survive, and ultimately, this world and this digital world will become a world of forced entrepreneurship. And an entrepreneur is one man who does not require college degrees. College degree is needed by the system which was created where clerks were built, made, educated, or university professors. An entrepreneur is one who learns every skill all the time and develops himself to do something new. We'll have a lot of entrepreneurs in this world. These are a few concepts which I 
thought about. But if we go on further, what has changed is a question which comes to me. And what has actually changed is the social interaction. There used to be a time when I used to say, Ki gale millo mere dost, dil kar hai tusse gale milne ko. But today, I would say, mohabbat dur se zyada achi hoti hai. And the reason is simple. The social distancing is there to stay. We are going to be more hygienic. We would be washing our hands. I still remember the day when I was young and I used to go to my nani's place. There was one tap which was at the entrance of the house and we were supposed to wash our hands and feet, take off our shoes and enter the home. Nobody entered the home, especially the kitchen with shoes. Probably that is going to come back. We are going to wash our hands, sanitize our hands, wear a mask, meet people from a distance, still love them. Probably there would be more humanity in it. That may happen. The other thing which will change is the health consciousness. We have realized that the most important thing for the human being at the moment is health. In fact, money cannot buy you health. The only thing which will buy us health is consciousness and looking after it. And that is going to be another stepping stone for us. In the last couple of days or weeks, I would say, I've spent the time with my family, which I never spent before. And I really realized so many things about my son and my daughters, and so many things about my wife, which I did not know. And probably sitting down together and talking comfortably without any stress, even for two hours, gives us the potion and the magic which was not there before. I was reading a book of Stephen Covey and he says something fantastic. If you have a couple of things in life and you put anything else after that, you would always be a winner. And one of them was spirituality, one of them was family time, number three was healthy, number four was exercise. And all these things were missing from so many of our lives and we were into work. But if you put these four things together, you put anything after that, you would always be a winner. Work style is going to change. People are going to, people are going to work from home. There are going to be works which would be done online. And this would actually give a smaller space to the office, less investment to the office, more time to everybody. Education, Mr. Tarun has said, will change, is going to be online. People will not need degrees. I'm not talking of the medical profession. The medical profession is different because we have a different training altogether. So for us, those degrees to practice, that hard work, those 16, 18 hours for a stretch of about 12, 18 years will go on. But for the rest, and even for the skills I would like to read or learn, online is fantastic. And nowadays, these online courses also give you a certificate if that is what you are waiting for. Priorities will change. And these priorities would be looking after family, health, ourselves, and our understanding that money does not give you happiness. This is something which human beings are going to realize very soon. I heard the chirping of the birds, sorry, I hear the chirping of the birds every day now. I see squirrels. There is so less of pollution. I saw a couple of photographs of the Ganga, pristine, just like you see when you go to Paris, the Seine River. And I always used to feel, how is it so that the Ganga is not the way it is over there? And I realized it was all man-made. We were to blame for it, not the Ganga. This thing should continue, will continue, and probably would be good. Business models are going to change. Different business models are going to come up, and those who adapt fast, successfully, will be the business models to look forward to. Food and entertainment will change. I have not been to a restaurant for the last two months. I've had home food. I think it's healthy. I think it's very healthy. And despite the lockdown, I'm able to have fruits, vegetables, everything. And probably not eating out will make us more healthy 
Entertainment is going to change. Complete entertainment would be on the small screen, not on the big screen. And it's going to be a different world altogether. Now, what are the industries which are going to be affected, which I would want you to talk to you about? And I would talk to a few industries which would be affected, which I feel, and a few industries which need to be looked up to, which I would talk to you about. Jobs are going to go when there would be no revenue to expect that you would be paid, won't be possible. And this is going to go across all sectors. And the recruitment which we thought would be there probably may not be there. Travel, tourism. I think this travel and tourism would be most hit. Nobody would travel, tourism would go down. And looking at the fact that Spain and Italy, their whole economy was based on tourism, I do not think anybody is going to go there for the next two years. The ESHRI conference has been canceled. I believe it has become online. I don't know how many of us would be interested in attending online. The ASRM most probably from all I think would also become an online conference. Hospitality industry, they're sitting on huge inventories, massive staff, extreme expenses, and nobody to be there. That's going to be hit. Restaurants are going to be hit. Retail will be hit for some time at least. Nobody's going to go to the stores to buy something. Nobody is going to go to malls which are air conditioned. I still fear myself in the air conditioning. If this virus gets into the ducts, really how it's going to be for us. Live sports, IPL won't be there. All the leagues of Kabaddi won't be there. The sports industry will be affected. The sports stars will be affected. In fact, all the stars of sports and cinema will be different. They would come onto the small TV. I just don't know how they would adapt. Cinema industry, I do not think for the next couple of years, I would go to a cinema hall. And the film industry, which till day was the industry which everybody thought about, looked about, romanticized, would change. It's going to be a different industry altogether. I don't know how they would adapt, but it will be strongly affected. Events and conferences. The last conference I attended was the SAR conference. But I think for a long time, I would say this was the last conference I attended because I do not think conferences are going to be hold, held for a long time. Events are going to be postponed won't be there. Marriages are going to be take, are, they'll be close family members for marriages. It would not be those things where they have 2,000, 4,000 people for marriages. It's going to be an affair where a few people would happily be married. I don't know whether for the honeymoon for the next couple of months, they're going to go anywhere. But yes, life is going to change. Luxury products. I have bought nothing for the last two months. And my wife, who is PhD in shopping, has bought nothing for the last two months. I asked her, are you missing something? She said, what? I realized this is the best thing to happen because luxury products, even the rich people probably will not purchase because they would realize, whom will you show your Rolex watch to? And I remember something beautiful which Osho said, so luxury products are going to go down. Real estate was already in a bad state. Construction and real estate will go down. But I think if it goes down to a level, it's time to invest into real estate for the future. This may be a good time to invest. Automotive at the moment would be down, but with time to come even, it will never reach the level it is at the moment because expensive vehicles, I'm not very sure how many people would buy because there would not be too much to travel for some time. Oil and gas, we know, wow, there is no pollution. Local transport, other transport is going to change. The only transport at the moment is for food and medicines. The rest of the transport is down. Uber, Ola are down. This is going to change. But I'm going to talk to you now about the industry to look forward to. Invest in, 
adapt it in your industry, use it for yourself. Number one, healthcare. Healthcare will grow. It will grow for the reason that everybody needs healthcare and the consciousness of healthcare has gone up. Every human being is going to say, I want to be healthy. And this will not only promote the modern healthcare, it is also going to promote the alternative and spiritual healthcare. Healthcare industry is to be looked forward to as well as the pharma industry. In fact, if the API manufacturing is shifted to this country from China, the pharma industry, the API manufacturing from China, this country would be providing everything to the world. Digital products. A digital product doesn't need any transport. It doesn't need any trucks. It doesn't need any warehouses. It does not need any middlemen. This is going to grow and everybody will have to use this. Gig economy. Uh, gig economy will be the economy to stay and to live in. Now, gig economy would be an economy where you give a gig to somebody, he does it, he's not your employee, he does it and you pay him. Uh, example, Ola Uber. Ola Uber, simple. They don't own a taxi. The owner of the taxi runs it, they pay him. The gig economy is going to grow. They are going to be gig managers who are going to manage the whole job as a gig. And this is something to be looked into in the future. Stock market investing, the stocks are going down. And uh, the country, from what I feel, because I'm an optimistic, would be there as a great country. The stock market is down. If there is liquidity, this would be the time to purchase. Online teaching, wow, it would be a new story altogether. Online teaching would grow to the level that actually everybody would be better educated because those people who can't go to schools, who can't go to colleges, who don't have time, would be forced to be entrepreneurs and learn online. Mental health. Dr. Varka, you have a great time ahead. This would need a lot of, I would say, energy. After demonetization and GST, I remember this psychiatric friend of mine, this is the truth. His clinic used to have two patients, but post this, his clinic used to be stuffed. Whenever I used to go to his place, I would say, wow, this is fantastic. If anybody has been really helped by demonetization and GST, it was mental health. And this pandemic, again, is going to grow every kind of mental health. Alternate energy. We've realized with the clean air that solar energy and wind energy need to be used. Companies would come up. Investing in that would probably be the future. Alternate medicine is going to grow. And it will grow leap bounds, though I belong to the modern medicine. But this is something which people spiritually and as human beings want to accept. Affiliate marketing and network marketing. These two things for which you do not have to physically have a warehouse or have a product with you would be something which is going to grow phenomenally. If you look at something interesting, even during the lockdown, Jio has launched its marketplace and it has partnered with Facebook and WhatsApp. So ultimately, though it is joining the Kirana store, it is the same story that the Kirana store is going to supply only through the network. And this is the way business will change. Data science will change. And one thing which will change is I've had a very close friend and mentor, Dr. Rakesh Sinha. His son is a brilliant guy. I went to meet him when I last went to Mumbai and I asked him, what are you doing? He said, I have a gaming team. I said, what do you mean by a gaming team? He said, I work through Chennai and Singapore. And just like you have IPL teams, we have online gaming teams. I never understood it. It's a great time for you now. 
This is the way economy is going to change. Spiritual sciences will grow. And I personally feel this is where I would like to uh, end it. But before I end, there is one thing which I would like to say. And that is, एक बड़ा पुराना शेर है साहिल कहते हैं किनारे को किनारा मतलब नदी का किनारा तो हम लोगों के लिए इस समय बड़ा जरूरी है ये समझना कि साहिल पे पहुंचने से इंकार किसने किया है और साहिल पे पहुंचने से इंकार किसे है लेकिन तूफानों से लड़ने का मजा ही कुछ और है कहते हैं किस्मत खुदा लिखता है लेकिन उसे मिटाकर खुद लिखने का मजा ही कुछ और है ये जमाना ऐसा आया है ये टाइम ऐसा आया है जहां पर हम सबको लग के इस नई दुनिया की ओर जाना है थैंक यू वेरी मच एंड आई थिंक इट्स टाइम आई हैंड इट ओवर द माइक टू डॉक्टर अशोक अग्रवाल प्लीज thank you steel uh, what a wonderful uh, steering in the future uh, lecture that you gave i think it was uh, just uh, marvelous i think uh, hearing you and then hearing uh, before you tarun it provided so many different uh, uh, answers and uh, scenarios uh, which uh, is very difficult for many of us to imagine and uh, uh, and think it through so really i think uh, it is uh, wonderful that uh, uh, such uh, uh, kind of forward looking things uh, uh, you were able to bring both of you um, i believe that uh, this will be a, uh, this is a uh, this is a great uh, lecture and uh, something that we really will not be able to to get uh, uh, to hear from many of uh, the medical professionals so especially for sunil uh, i want to congratulate you for uh, uh, putting together this uh, 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 extraordinary uh, presentation is starting with the uh, with the spanish flu coming from uh, british uh, soldiers or indian soldiers coming from british uh, Sec first world war and taking us all the way to uh various uh, winning and uh, losing industries and uh, your uh, your personal uh, thoughts uh, along with it i think this is very illuminating and uh, very very uh, interesting so what i would like uh, that uh, we open it up now for question and answer uh, both sunil and myself uh, will uh, be the moderator uh, for the questions so i will uh, ask all the panelists to please uh, unmute uh, their uh, uh, their uh, microphone so that we can pose some of the questions uh, hundreds of questions that have come to us from uh, from uh, the audience so i will uh, start with uh, one and then we will keep on going so one of the question that we have is um, Uh, the government is uh, very confused as uh, are the people so how do you expect clarity uh, remember the demonetization and the frequent change in rules by the government uh, bank uh, reserve bank uh, is this a replay so this question is for dr varka and i will request her to keep her answer short so we can handle many of the questions Are you sure this uh, question is not for Mr. Tarun Gupta because it's a demonetization question referring? Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. Oh, yeah, I, I think uh, uh, this is a good question for uh, for Tarun. I'm sorry. Yes, Tarun, please go ahead. So, of course, we, as I said, we are uh, these are confusing times. So we we are all nonplussed. We are all uh, confused. Uh, but then again, the state. ought to know better and share better so i understand there will be different scenarios so you know uh, we are hearing that perhaps we'll be able to restore normalcy by say july august then there is another view which says no uh, october november and then there is also this entrenched view that 
unless a miracle happens uh, it will uh, we are at least one year away from either herd immunity or an effective vaccine so i think at least a so the situation is dynamic it will keep its fluid and the strategy and the response will have to be calibrated accordingly but at least of fortnight before now for example on the 3rd of may when the lockdown ends uh today as we are speaking on the 28th of april till date we do not have clarity as to what will open how much will open where all will it open so that is the first clarity that uh, i think we need from the government so uh, i'm not saying you indulge in crystal ball gazing uh, but looking say a fortnight ahead let's take one fortnight at a time at least as laymen we cannot do it the government can they they have uh, access to more information and they are better positioned but i think their response has to be more uh, more cogent more uh, perspicuous and it has to be um, um, more timely okay um i i think thank you very much uh, tarun uh, uh and this question um, is uh, for dr varkha um so there is a question from an audience uh, saying that i want to be brave but i am born weak can i learn it yes so there is nothing like uh, strength or weakness uh, bra uh, bravado or uh, timidity these are usually acquired attitudes as the child grows up and becomes an adult we all have strong moments and we all have weak moments so i think the most important thing for this person to understand is that it is okay at this time to be nervous to be anxious to be scared because that is not a sign of lack of courage and the more one gives one self the permission to be um, upset about these very difficult times in a way paradoxically the more courageous he will be because he is accepting his humanness and he is giving himself the permission to be simply a human being and not a superman thank you um and this question i think uh, is uh, probably uh, more suited for uh, dr sunil so the question here is uh, after the development and i think it we can say uh, when the development of vaccine against the novel corona virus uh, occur will this pandemic uh, end at this time it's a very interesting question because of two reasons number one there was a thought process in a lot of people who are not of the medical background that we've had the corona virus and the government has done a lockdown and once the lockdown is over the corona virus is going to end and we have a normal life no these viruses exist in society and they come up in waves and these are the kind of waves which actually may lead to repeated lockdowns in our country we do not know first second the only way out is probably the development of a vaccine and the development of this vaccine may take a year one and a half or so and the other supposition is that if this population 75% 40 50% of the population gets infected and a herd immunity takes place then the virus will not have a place to play around with so once the vaccine is there the question is will the vaccine be supplied to the mass massive population which we have if everybody gets vaccinated yes otherwise vaccination with herd immunity together is going to manage this uh thank you very much sunil uh, and this uh, question is from one of the audience uh, asking uh, from dr varkha how to manage the stress of going out and uh, uh, looking and uh, seeing new places public places so i think just the protocols that uh, of sanitation and hygiene 
and i think go out only if uh, one must really need to go out for emergency situations or supply buying etc wear your gloves wear your mask maintain the physical distance that has been asked of you and when you come back follow protocols of washing your hands and not touching your face i think beyond the point if we just follow simple rules emotionally we'll be much more at ease okay um another question is uh, this from one of the delegate uh, um i get irritable and angry a lot because i am uh, really cooped up at home how can i manage myself better how can i deal with this kind of uh, uh, anger and irritability in my behavior which is affecting everyone in my home so i think uh, the person um, uh, will first need to find a kind of a routine or a regularity to his life or her life and actually try and uh, you know make uh, structures of uh, hours where he sleeps at a particular time gets up at a particular time so, and keeps himself engaged and involved in activities and uh, engagements or events which satisfy and fulfill him so reading a book watching a show engaging with a friend on a conversation playing with his child etc the minute the mind is engaged and has accepted the reality that for better or for worse we are locked down and uh, i just saw that uh, the chief minister of maharashtra has extended our lockdown till 18th of may okay the sooner he accepts and makes peace with the reality the less irritable he will be okay um <clears throat> sunil um, can you unmute your uh, microphone uh, mm -hmm. do you have any questions uh, uh, from the panelist uh, um uh, mr tarun and uh, Avarka, anything that you want to ask, uh, uh, just in general, anything uh, that you feel uh, will be representing what uh, our audience is looking for. I I received a question from uh, uh, the audience. One of the questions which I received was, "What is the future of reproductive medicine?" Which I was told by Sanjeev. So I thought you were going to ask me that question. Yeah. So, <laughs> so he he just shared it with me. So, um, I, I was just wondering that for the time being, for some time, I mean, though reproduction is very important, but um, apart from a livelihood or other healthcare, it probably would take a back seat. So for some time, till the time things settle down. reproductive medicine will not be the line for which the patient would be very eager to go ahead with because um, the way it is one but otherwise healthcare apart from reproductive medicine probably will be something in the next 2 3 years to go up because i feel a lot of uh, funding will come into it a lot of i mean the gdp of the government which is hardly spent on healthcare will i hope now be spent on healthcare so the ancillary industries will grow so i personally feel sir that this is the way healthcare would be okay well um, i believe that uh, there are a lot of questions uh, that are still coming in uh, but we are running out of time here and uh, what we would like to do is uh, maybe uh, later on uh, answer some of the questions that have come in um and uh, and deal directly later on rather than continuing because we are a little bit over the time so i would like uh, um if you can sunil change uh, the slide please oh, sorry sir um so see. yes sir. so we have some take home messages i got this beautiful slide from the net while i was looking for it it's a very interesting thing that it was written as per the slide in 19, 1869 by Kathleen O'Mara and this is a picture of the spanish flu of 1919 and people stayed at home and read books and listened and they rested and did exercises and made art and played and learned new ways of being and stopped and listened more deeply someone meditated someone prayed someone met their shadow and people began to think differently and people healed and in the absence of people who lived in ignorant ways dangerous meaningless heartless the earth 
also began to heal. And when danger ended and people found themselves, they grieved for the dead and made new choices and dreamt of new visions and created new ways of living and completely healed the earth just as they healed. This was something beautiful which I found and I thought I'd like to share with you. But the take home messages probably would be, these are unprecedented times and impact on the future will be unimaginable. The state has a prominent role in shaping our future. We need clear communication from the government on the way forward. There is too much uncertainty and speculation. More confidence building measures will help. Somehow need to get the wheel of economy rolling. It's no longer about lives. It's now about saving livelihoods for lives. There is an opportunity every crisis. There's an untapped potential we can harness and make it from a developing to a developed world. If there was a seminal moment, it is now. Adaption, being quick, technology, digitalization and integrity is the key. It's not the fittest that survive, but the most adaptable. A shift in international order might be possible. This might be an opportune time to reset our priorities and bring about structural reforms. This is the take home messages. I have, I would just like to, at this moment, share something with you with which I wanted to end and This is, this used to be my favorite song and I thought I would share it with you. Are you in I'll just one minute, sir. I'll just take a minute. I'll just take a minute. Not I think it's not running, but anyway, it was. It is running, running. Yeah. It, one sec. Oh, what happened? Is it running? Uh, give it time now. Click it. I mean, this is beautiful. I wanted to end it with the Imagine song of John Lennon. And this would have been the most amazing thing to listen to at this moment. How, how about uh, you uh, uh, give it a try? <laughs> no, 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 I won't. I won't, I won't. Because, you know, this is it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. There is just nothing which could be... I'll just take one second. If I could get it, I would... Just put, I'll yeah, just put yeah. it on. Just you one. Can it on the YouTube. Yeah, I'll just one sec. Just one. Just a minute. Just a minute. I would just you put just it. You just uh, put uh, John Lennon's uh, glasses, and you will be able to sing the uh, image. <laughs> you know, you 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 at times I feel. I I think Amit. It, should, it needs to be on the desktop. It needs. It needs to be on the desktop and uh, it should have been an open screen. I think it should have been an open screen, which I'm, I'm not able to share now. And sir, I think I'll have to skip it, though I really oh, thought it would be great. No, that's fine. We, uh, we got the message. Um, uh, let us... Uh, I want to uh, join Sunil in uh, thanking uh, uh, all the delegates uh, who have joined uh, in this uh, uh, initiative uh, from uh, all over uh, India. And I'm not sure if uh, people from other parts of the world have also joined. Um, I want to thank uh, our distinguished panel of speakers, uh, Dr. Varka Chulani, uh, Mr. Tarun Gupta, uh, Dr. Sunil Jindal, uh, for a fabulous uh, presentation uh, of the type that uh, we don't really get to hear. Um, and I think they are so very important for so many different reasons. So thank you all of you for putting this information together, sharing your thoughts, sharing your opinion, 
and uh, most importantly uh, for your uh, sparing your valuable time uh, with all of us uh, and uh, thank you so much i also want to thank uh, um, uh, mr durga satpati and his team of dedicated uh, staff from intas pharmaceutical for unrestricted educational grant in support of uh, our program so i want to uh, thank them for uh, for all the things that they have done and uh, lastly i will leave uh, uh, the program in the hands of uh, dr sunil he will have uh, some uh, uh, last uh, lasting words that he want to share with all of you so thank you very much namaskar and uh, god bless all of you thank you sir thank you thank you everybody thank you so much thank you the amazing audience which we've had and once again let me be honest with you i never imagined that i would be speaking on a topic which was so unmedical unmedical is a new word which i have got out mm -hmm. and but i realized in the last 15 days this is what i was thinking about of how this world would be i've had a lot of discussions with dr agarwal i you know a few you get very lucky when you get a few brilliant people as your elder brothers though they never be born by the same mother and he always stretches me to the limit and uh, stretches all of us to the limit it's been such a pleasure mr durga satpati durga ji all the people we've had over here varka ji mr tarun gupta thank you very much and aapne rahat indori ka naam suna hai pata nahi kya hua hai mujhe is baar jab se ye lockdown hua hai tab se kasam se aisa ho gaya hu jaise shayar ho gaya kyunki bahut si inspiration milti hai sir aur itni kamal ki cheez unki thi ki aapko kya batau wo kehte hain ki rakh hausla rakh hausla wo manzar bhi aayega rakh hausla wo manzar bhi aayega प्यासे के पास चल के समुंदर खुद आएगा अरे थक करना बैठ थक करना बैठ ए मंजिल के मुसाफिर मंजिल भी मिलेगी और मिलने का मजा भी आएगा तो अल्टीमेटली थैंक यू वेरी मच एवरीबडी इट हैज बीन सो काइंड ऑफ एवरीबडी लव यू ऑल थैंक यू सो मच thank you very much and the next <laughs> yes sir uh, i was wanting you to announce the next program which we have for the second sir um i think uh, you are holding the mic so please continue i think okay. that uh, so, so we have planned a program for the second which is a very important program second may so sorry second may you know it spaced me out <laughs> this thing has spaced me out so the second of may and the program is what and how to open our practices what are the rules and regulations for an ivf clinic for laparoscopy for a small nursing home for a corporate hospital and we trying to get those people who actually would be the people with a panel discussion of whom we would actually be able to know what to do when we open up we would also like to collect a lot of guidelines as they have come from different places from government organizations which we would like to put the link on to and give all those links to anybody in fact the whole bunch of it a manual of it to anybody who joins us on the 2nd of may 6 o'clock thank you very much thank you thank you namaskar again and everyone stay safe just uh, sab log sahi rahe aur uh, thank you very much um i think this concludes our program for today the speakers can continue to stay online for a debrief and uh, we can uh, uh, actually stop the transmission to the audience mr satpati is it stopped now uh, i'm just checking